So welcome to part four of uh, repairing our hydro plant. If you haven't seen the previous parts, you should go and watch them. This will make a lot more sense if you watch the first three parts. So where I'm at is I need to weld some steel, so I need to cut some steel, and here I am doing some of the fabrication. I'm gonna cut a lot of the grinding out of this because honestly that's pretty boring to watch. Meanwhile, while all this has been going on, our company's managed to pick up a fairly significant order, and we're continuing to cut our piano with product. But now we have to come up with 1,000 guitar tops in the next two weeks. We have some already cut, but it's just like the grading required, the time investment to get it all packaged. Is there anything concerning? Chances of me getting a day off are getting slimmer and slimmer. First hole, and now we gotta size up. There's a tin can full of uh, metal shavings here. I don't know who started doing this. Probably my grandfather, maybe he was gonna use them. Maybe he's just trying to keep the place tidy, but I will join him. Why not? Why not save the shavings? down for that pillow block. size on the shaft. Now I don't know how that happened. I'm not gonna name names or point fingers because yeah it could have been me. I have no idea. Either way two different sizes on the pulley versus the shaft. So uh, here let me just turn that around. So grinder this fancy little one that I borrowed and lots of hand filing and Three hours later, here is a nice key. All done putting in those bolts? Yep. Perfect. 
Is that the last bull? I hope so. <laughs> this better be the last one. I might move this chain hoist out of the way. Okay. I hate this chain hoist. I swear we should... Uh, we should get it rid of it. We should just... Get we should get like an electric battery powered one. Yeah. 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 What are you supposed to stand on to be able to operate this I don't know. Thing? Yeah. Okay, so we're up at the intake. This is the cumulative test run of all of the components we've been working on over the last month. So it's been one month since our power plant broke. And we have modified a lot of things since then. We're about like 10 minutes into trying to fill the pipe, 15 minutes maybe. Really short on water. I can see a bunch leaking out right there. I see water coming out of the ground. That's a good sign. Generator spinning. So I guess that's what's known as failing a splash test. Because uh, we're sure splashing a lot of water around. My slingers are not working and the seals are not working very well. We're short on pressure right now. We're leaking water where we shouldn't be. Our valve is not closing. And our intake is not filling. Man. And on that fun note, I probably have to go. <laughs> Let's pull these boards. Okay. Oh my goodness, my bearing is so hot. 149. Is that the other one? They go the same. Surprising amount of water spraying around the there. Yeah. Your washing machine in there. Okay, well, I think ultimately our first test was a success. Nothing blew up, nothing broke, everything spun. The most obvious and approachable problem is the cover because there's water coming out of the cover somewhere. And I didn't silicone anything for the first test, so I think it's time to pull the cover, climb in the tunnel, do some siliconing. And I guess that means I need the chain hoist. This chain hoist has to go. So while I take a moment to recover from the chain hoist slipping, just give us a quick thumbs up if you haven't done that already. Make sure your notifications are turned on. You can also head over to mountainvoice.ca to check out our growing list of products. This is our second test. The temperature is cold. Mike's hands are freezing. Deal with some of the gapping in our uh, metal pipes as they've eroded. We have wrapped it in a layer of plastic. Very ghetto and hopefully very effective. So, a little bit of water hammer effect. Hopefully the pipe can handle it, but the water is bouncing up and down the pipe. I can see if there's water going over our spillway, so I'm gonna put another board on there. Yeah, I guess this is just an interesting look at what would happen if we had a better seal on our dam. We've used a piece of plastic on the outside of our boards to create a much tighter joint whole way down and now we're leaking only basically from the sides more or less. Steam changer for sure. Yeah. I think we're leaking a little bit. Oh it's coming down the tunnel. I'm gonna go check the drain. It's not a big puddle of water above our pipe, anyway. Okay, so we know there is a glue joint right underground here that has failed. And it was temporarily patched maybe like five or six years ago by just pushing it back into place. Yeah. And this, I mean, this is kind of before our time. 
Maybe it's coming from there. If our 90 degree elbow is leaking at all, like maybe our glue joint had a leak in it, that would also show up in the exact same spot. Uh, where we're at, we don't know why there's water coming out there. It's not a lot. So we're going to turn the plant on and just see what happens. Likely our bearings will heat up and also likely some water will escape our shroud. We will deal with problems as they come up. Okay, so we just turned our power plant on. The amount of power we're producing at this point is a little low compared to what I would expect. The bearing temperatures, they climbed rapidly at the beginning from 45 degrees Fahrenheit quickly up to about 70 and 90 within five minutes. The water is not actually coming out of the casing, but it's hard to tell because our plant is now full of water because the water is coming through our wall somewhere. And the amount of pressure in our pipe is, I think, below where it should be, although we can't really trust these old gauges. Low pressure plus water kind of escaping into our building somewhere, to me indicates we have a small crack, failed glue joint or something of that nature that is eating up a bunch of our pressure. Maybe we can run it for a while, but eventually that might cause some issues. Uh, regardless, I feel like I'm gonna have to go back into the ground come uh, more favorable weather conditions and do some digging around and figure out what's going on. Which is a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. <sighs> I don't know, it's been a long time since we turned the lights on in the shop and they're on right now, which is amazing. I've got the dry kiln trying to start up and it's throwing me all sorts of crazy codes like a boiler too cold, low water, all that stuff. But I wanna see what our load management software is telling us here. Now that I've got the dry kiln on, 